We begin today taking a look at uh, why environmentalists are outraged over President Obama's recent Gulf trip. As tens of thousands of Americans descended upon Washington, D.C. to protest the Keystone Exel pipeline, we find out days later President Obama was golfing at a Florida result with Tiger Woods and oil bigwigs. Among his golf buddies, Jim Crane and Milton Carroll, both prominent figures in the Texas oil industry. Crane happens to own the exclusive yacht and golf club where they were playing. He is also a big donor of the Obama campaign. And Carroll is the chairman of Houston-based Centerpoint Energy. Both men are directors of Western Gas Holdings, one of the largest oil and gas companies in the world. So what does this imply about America's energy future? To discuss, I'm joined by John Wunderlich, policy director at the Sunlight Foundation here in D.C., and Chris Williams, an environmental activist in New York. Welcome, gentlemen, to the both of you. So, uh, Chris, I'm going to start off with you. During President Obama's State of the Union speech, he mentioned climate change, and environmentalists hailed him for this. But less than a week later, the president's out golfing with oil executives while Americans are protesting the Keystone Pipeline. So uh, is his golf match with oil tycoons a slap in the face for environmentalists? Uh, I know you're an environmentalist yourself. What do you think? Uh, very much so. It shows that he is full of fine words, but very skimpy on actual action. So when he was talking about his all of the above energy strategy during his State of the Union uh, and boasting about how many more pipelines he's uh, intending to lay or has laid during his, during his previous administration, I think that that is really uh, his focus and his emphasis, clearly, because he spends his afternoons with... Uh, his uh, oil buddies rather than listening to 50,000 people outside his house, which is where I was on Sunday. All right. So you think it's all talk. Uh, actions speak louder than words. I, I think you would agree with. Um, John, I want to ask you, we already know that big business leaders have, have more access to the president and government officials than, you know, the average American. But uh, does this FaceTime, does it actually influence policy? Absolutely. If you, if, if you, I, uh, have more time to represent your position and your issue in front of people with more power, then of course your, their decisions are going to reflect your priorities. And at the same time as the president was golfing with executives over the weekend, we were uh, in, the, in the accountability community dealing with the announcement of his new C4, his new group that can receive large unlimited campaign contributions, and really grappling with what that means for the accountability of the decisions that the president's going to be making. All right. You, you know, in the U.S., we pride ourselves on being a democracy. Every vote counts. Uh, what does this essentially do to that notion? Well, we wonder how much the, the merit of decision making gets undermined when people can write a $500,000 check to the president or, or to the president's organization. And that's the reason that we don't that we have limits and disclosure requirements for campaign finance. And what the president has really done is built a new system outside the campaign finance laws to receive corporate and unlimited donations. And we think that that's really threatening to the way that we make important decisions as a democracy, as a country, like, like these environmental decisions. Mm. Chris, um, on the environmental front, um, I want to ask you, uh, what is the environmental impact of drilling for natural gas? Um, uh, and because uh, what we saw, uh, people are saying that this is historic, that this is one of the biggest environmental protests that we've seen um, in our history. Um, so can you talk more about what your concerns are, are as, a, as an environmentalist, the impact that this could have on the environment? Well, if they uh, actually build this pipeline and uh, bring 800,000 uh, barrels of oil from tar sands in Canada a day to Texas for refining. As James Hansen, the uh, director of the NASA Goddard Center, has said, it's game over for climate. So this would be an absolutely devastating blow, not just to indigenous uh, rights and people in Canada but, and the devastation of Canadian um, ecosystems, but also burning all of that oil every single day uh, will mean that uh, it's impossible to uh, make any, any real advancement with the question of climate change and doing something meaningful. And it, it, and it means you're building more and more infrastructure based on oil and gas burning for the future uh, when we should be moving in a completely different direction. I mean, the 21st century should be the century when we start really moving drastically away from fossil fuels, 
towards alternatives and energy conservation. And the Obama administration is all about ramping up oil and gas production to virtually unprecedented levels and uh, making the U.S. Uh, compete with Saudi Arabia in terms of its output for oil and uh, fossil fuels. Now, President so Obama, he has talked about this transition to clean energy. He has talked talked about uh, getting off of this dependence on fossil fuels. Do you think that um, this recent Gulf extravaganza is proof that um, that's not going to happen? I think it's absolutely indicative of the fact that he's not serious when it comes to making a transition in the near term. And I think if we're going to get anywhere, the movement has to be independent of the Democratic Party because they are not our allies. And uh, the people themselves have to do it. Uh, we have to do it. We are the people. We need to be organized. Four in five Americans think the government should do more about to address climate change. And they're absolutely right. So uh, we need to get organized and we need more protests. It's fantastically inspiring that there were 50,000 people in the freezing cold. So uh, I, I'm uh, eager for more. All right. I, I do want to bring up one more thing, John. Um, Hillary Clinton, no longer the Secretary of State, but she is still making the news. She um, is reportedly going to make a lot of cash as a speaker, um, charging $100,000 uh, somewhere in that ballpark to speak. Um, so uh, what are the implications of this? Uh, what does it say about the revolving door uh, of money and influence in Washington? Well, we have to worry about officials that are leaving top positions and the way that they use their position to cash in, whether it's to influence or just to sell the reputation and name that they have, and then also officials coming into government. And I think with this situation, we have both concerns, whether Hillary is going to be selling access to the decisions and people that she was in charge of as Secretary of State, and then also whether people that pay her $100,000 speaker fees are actually buying a better position for a potential future, future politi political career that Hillary may have. Mm, a so. lot more questions. Uh, very interesting, gentlemen. Appreciate you both weighing in on this. That was John Wunderlich, Policy Director at the Sunlight Foundation, and Chris Williams, an environmental activist.